Right. We're going to wait for some folks to catch up with us. Okay, so just be patient. We will start in just a second. We've got to wait for those folks to, to, uh, to catch up on, on, on what's going on. Um, those of you who uh, have given me props for the weight loss, I thank you. Um, yeah, the uh, collar's looking a little loose. So might be time to drop to the 17 instead of the 17 and a half. Um, also, try to remember to support your parishes. Um, I know I say this at the beginning of every Bible study while I'm waiting to uh, get myself into trouble, but um, I would love for you to, to sort of just contemplate that your parish relies on your gifts to get by. And so uh, make sure that you are sending your check-in or giving online or the, or the like. Um, and after you've done those things, you can support your favorite youth organization, which is higher things. And so make sure you do that as well. Um, one thing here and then one more. Hi, Amy Turnage Hanley. Good to see you. Uh, um, one more share and we'll be cooking with gas. Did that just hit him in the head? <laughs> oh, it just hit him in the head. Hi, Terry Lynn. Good to see you. We're going to start with verse 16 of chapter 11. 11, 16. For those of you scoring at home, um, uh, this is a, this is an ongoing discussion. And so I invite you to, um, to, uh, participate. Um, a lot of times your comments or your questions will come in about a minute late to me. Um, that's the delay. Hi, Jennifer. That's the delay between, um, when you do your thing and when I, as I'm doing my thing, uh, no problem. When I see the question, I'm going to answer it as best I can. And I welcome Oh, Heidi's here. I welcome um, the gift of a correction. I'd rather um, we correct each other together than to see my name, um, you know, oh my gosh, he's wrong. So um, you're welcome to participate, welcome to, prov to provide insight, um, and we'll sort of bounce off each other even if there's a delay of sorts. Okay? All right. Uh, to what shall I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to their, um, that's their, like, like their, like their, their sort of, um, um, uh, they're like companions. That's like, their, that's like their buddies. So it's like children in the marketplace and they call to their friends, um, we played the flute for you and you didn't dance. I can't dance. I, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I don't dance. Don't ask me. Um, how sophomoric of me. You little. Here, buddy. Really? Nothing. He'll eat the treat. He just won't catch the treat. We played the flute for you, flute for you but you did not dance. We sang... The lament to you, and you didn't mourn. Um, this is an odd sentence. And my guess, my thought on this is, um, I, think, I think this is what you are experiencing if you have the children at home. We're bored. We're bored. Entertain us. We're bored. Bored, bored, bored. Entertain us. Bored. John, cool. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for your gift, by the way. Um, Brant, Pastor uh, Hoffman, is here. 
Uh, Gail is here. Felicity's here. Dana, good to see you. And Thor is here. I see um, Sue Pellegrini. Mom's here. Jennifer, Sandra Dean, Priscilla, and also Zach. And uh, let's not forget Erica and whoever it is that is behind the... Um, that's deliberate, Pastor Rake. We're deliberately keeping sound from you. Um, Pastor Rake is also here. Could we give you a bookshelf tour later? <laughs> Hear that? Hole in one. I don't know if you saw it. Let's see it. No, never mind. All right. Let's make sure that. All right. So. I think they're just sitting there and no matter what we do, no matter what I do to you, it's not enough. I played the dirge and you didn't mourn. I played the uh, flute and you didn't dance. You, nothing's enough for you. Nothing's enough for you. Okay. Nothing's enough for you. Martha's here. Oh, big fan of Martha. Pazaglia. What a great last name, too. I hope her husband's doing fine. So, so how can I compare this generation? No matter what I do, it's not enough for you. Come back here, boy. He's on alert. No matter what I do for you, it's not enough for you. No matter what I do for you, 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 don't, you don't dance, you don't mourn, you don't, it's not enough for you. I'm never enough. Jesus is in tune enough with himself as the son of God to realize that he's never going to please these people. And he's the son of God. So he knows that he's, that they're not going to, they're not going to receive as gift anything that he does because um, it's not going to be enough. And this is what I mean. Check this out. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and you said he had a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you said, Behold, look, that man's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta get a higher, a lower pitched laugh. Uh, just a real high pitched laugh. I'm, I'm quite. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this. I want you to just imagine that no matter what your politics are, Jesus thinks of his, um, Jesus thinks of his ministry as worse than one of the coronavirus briefings where he can't, where like, where the, where the, where Trump can do nothing right. He, th he thinks that, it, like, like his, he lives that life. He lives that life. Um, uh, well, that's a good question, Pastor Rake. Who's the you that he's referring to? Um, now, the last you was the disciples. Um, that hasn't changed, I do not think. So remember this started, this, this, this whole thing started. Come back here, buddy. Come back and put back in your bed. There's no reason for you to remain. Um, get back, get back. Sit. Treat. Office knows. All right, so. I think the last you, Pastor Rake, um, is the disciples. It began with him talking to the, the talking, and what followed was um, what followed was this um, this interruption by the disciples of John. They're leaving, and as I go back, this is this monologue. So, and Jesus sort of laments to his disciples that no matter what he and John do, it's taken negative. So it's like, you don't do enough for us. So 
John the Baptist comes and he doesn't eat or drink. And they call him, they say he has a demon. Jesus comes eating and drinking there. They call him a glutton, a drunkard, and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Um, uh, again, in our day, uh, you hear this in the briefings where um, the president will say stuff like, I could cure, whether you like him or not, he has said this, I could cure cancer and you would still write bad things about me. Um, Jesus, before the Trumpster, he, he, he observes this in his people. Pastors see this a lot, that no matter what they do, um, it's not going to be enough for some people. Diet Mountain Dew. The they are the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious folks, Pastor Rake. So his next question is, they say, the notorious they, well, that has to be the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders. So, here we go. Yet wisdom, <laughs> yet Sophia, that's my daughter, Sophia. Um, Sophia um, is known by her children, is justified by her children, vindicated by her children. Um, wisdom, um, if you read the Proverbs, and remember I said that Jesus is, a lot of Jesus' best quotes that people love um, come from the Proverbs. And here, if you read the Proverbs, you will, um, you will understand um, this a lot more. Wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom, when you read the Proverbs, Proverbs sounds like Jesus. And here Jesus, by referencing wisdom, seems to make, um, seems to... Wisdom is known by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. And, 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 and who are the children here? Forgiven tax collectors. Reconciled sinners. Saved prostitutes. You and me. Gentiles. What comfort, what peace from him to you. Peace. Peace with God and therefore peace with one another. Is wisdom the gospel? The children of faith are witnesses to the truth of the gospel. Just thinking out loud. Again, Pastor Rick. And this is what I mean by that. I love, um, I've never been one as a teacher who has um, not appreciated a correction or a thought bomb or the like. I think iron sharpens iron so one friend sharpens another. Um, I, if you're not certain of yourself or you don't know yourself, then when somebody gives you a thought bomb or a correction, you uh, you get grumpy or, or, or the like or defensive. I'm, I'm just not that. I'm just a Southern boy here reading the reading the Bible with you in front of my books that you want me to give a tour of, uh, like Pelosi gives a tour of her freezer. Um, so um, I think wisdom is the whole lot, Rake. Um, it's gospel. I'm with you. Um, and it's law insofar as the law serves the gospel. But um, that's a great thought bomb and a great gift, I think. We finish this section. And, and, and again, this section occurs as the disciples of John are walking away. Um, at, so as the, as the disciples are walking away of John and returning with what they heard and see, that the, the, the blind receive their sight, the deaf walk, the lepers are cleansed, 
and the and the the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is the one who doesn't or isn't scandalized by me. And as they are sort of walking away, Pastor Killian is here. My buddy is here. Pastor Killian, boom! There's a fist bump for you. I'm sorry. We doing elbows now? Oh, man, that's bad. Um, he's on the job. The mail's here. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. Blues clues. Um, so as they're walking away, this discourse occurred, which ends with wisdom is justified by her children. And that's the comfort for pastors and the comfort for sinners. That um, uh, The comfort for pastors, when we never measure up, don't worry, Jesus didn't measure up either. Neither did John the Baptist. And there's no greater um, one born of woman than him. Also, come back here, buddy. Come over here. Come here. Come up here. Come here, buddy. Come here. You want this? It's right there. Everybody wants to see you. Um, you're never going to measure up. Pastors, you're never going to measure up. Somebody's always got a four-page single-space letter about how bad you are. They always do. Everywhere. And you're never going to measure up to them. And nor do you, ha- not do, nor do you have to. Because the only person that you truly answered Hey, buddy, it's not the time to dig to China. Come on. The only person that you truly answer to is your Lord Jesus. Um, The only person that you truly have to answer to is Jesus. And once you realize that, and before him, you are forgiven. Dear friends, I'm pretty certain that our time with Thor has come to an end. He is either in the mood that he's going to destroy things, or he's, yep, say goodbye to Thor. Thor has left the building. Priscilla, the king has left the building. Um, you too, sinners, you don't have to answer to the people around you. You'll never be enough for them either. The one you answer to is the Lord Jesus. And two sparrows don't fall to the earth apart, even though they're sold for a penny. Two for one, your father in heaven loves those birds. He loves you more than those birds. So don't fret. Don't fret the opinion of others. Don't fret their measurements. Don't fret it. Because Christ, Christ alone judges you. And his judgment, his judgment is Calvary. Is there no way to prove yourself? You know, Jim, I've given up on proving myself. Um, I try my hardest. You might. Sometimes I win people over. I become all things to all people, says St. Paul, in order to win a few. And uh, But every now and again, Ed's in the house. Every now and again, you have, to, you have to just accept the truth that the only one that really matters um, is Jesus. Suzanne is in the house. And thanks for your gift, Suzanne. All right. Continuing on with a new section, new part. How about I put the Bible uh, up for you so you can read with me? Um, but, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. The, the comfort for pastors is they called Jesus a drunkard. They called Jesus a glutton. And they called John the Baptist. They said he had a demon. And this is a comfort for all Christians, too. They'll say bad stuff about you. Don't fret it. Don't enter. The only opinion that matters is Jesus's. That's the only opinion that ultimately matters. In the end. Oh no. Oh no. Then he began to, um, that is a word I do not know, reproach the cities where most of his mighty works occurred because they did not repent. 
Um, before I, I switch gears to this verse, uh, Pastor Rick has one more. Why didn't Jesus act in a way that would avoid such criticism? Um, a dirge music? Um, dirge. Sad music. Look, Jim, I don't know if you know this, but sad songs, they say so much. Turn them on. Turn them on. Turn on those sad songs. <laughs> it's Elton John. Get it? <laughs> All right. So um, what I want to make sure you understand, what I want to make sure you uh, grasp is, um, is why doesn't Jesus do things that will not cause trouble? And that's because Pastor Rake, he's trying to save you and me specifically. If he acts and toes their line, then you and I would be under such law all the time. But because he is so free, that makes him dangerous. And his freedom isn't used in order to do what he wants to do. His freedom is used to save us. To die on a cross for your sins and mine. And so he doesn't toe their line because their line doesn't save us. Their line um, burdens troubled consciences and makes things worse. All right. So he did these mighty works in these cities and, and, and he's super popular in these cities. And he is like, um, he's like off the charts of more followers. I saw that, uh, like, like 2000 people watched one of these streams. He's got more followers that are watching our streams. And, 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 um, what does he do? He turns the guns on the very people who he has just helped. Why? Because they wouldn't repent. Because they won't change. Because he, they wouldn't change. Now, repentance. <laughs> repentance isn't just... That was me getting excited. Repentance is not just that they change and become a better person. I was an alcoholic and now I'm not an alcoholic. I was a drunkard and now I'm not a drunkard. I was a sinner and now I'm not a sinner. I was soph sophomoric and now I'm less sophomoric. Um, no! What he does, what, what, what true repentance is, is true repentance doesn't just stop with you changed your behavior, you were a bad person, and now you're not so bad. True repentance is that you repent of your sins, but believe the gospel. Believe that Jesus saves you. And so he turns the guns on them because they won't repent. They, do, they don't believe that he's the son of God. He's the Christ, the son of David. My dear friend Megan's here. All right. Pastor Yeager's also here. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you were done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long before in sackcloth and ashes. This is the good stuff. If the people in Tyre and Sidon had seen the things that you saw, they would have repented. He made reference to Sodom and Gomorrah earlier. Um, uh,
because those are the that's the group of people that um we really think are bad i mean they're bad people visitors come they want to do bad things to the visitors both the guys and the girls god destroys the town those are bad people and jesus says look if what happened in you happened in them, they would have repented. They would have repented. All right, so just so you know, these two towns that he's talking about are neither Sea of Galilee. And Tyre and Sidon are, are pagan cities that he's making reference to here, which they no doubt thought were the worst of the worst. So here's it, here's it in our language. If New Orleans and Vegas had heard the stuff that had happened in you, they would have repented with, with sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, Tyre and Sidon, to Tyre and Sidon, it would be more bear, bearable in the day of judgment than for you. <gasps> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine sitting in church... Can you imagine sitting in church and hearing that it would be better in Vegas on the last day than you, than your little church? Can you imagine that? Tim Rake's observation is astounding. Sodom rejected strangers. Bethsaida and Chorazin rejected the stranger. JC, the Christ. And remember, or San Francisco, Sandra, what a great observation. Pick your town that you think is a, is a, uh, a wretched uh, hive of scum and villainy um, from uh, from uh, A New Hope. You pick your town that you think is the worst of the worst of the worst, and it will be better for them than it will be for you. Why? Because you don't repent. Well, we're better people than them. That's not all repentance is. Repentance is not just that you change your behavior. It's that you believe you have a Savior who died for your behavior. You know, there are moments in which um, two different comments, Tuscaloosa, where Bama is. And I don't even want to acknowledge the deaconess's comment because you know what the deaconess's comment is? It's a trap. That's a trap. It would look a lot better if my face was a fish when I said that. That's a trap. All right. Back to the text. Deaconess Ellie, I, I, we cannot take you anywhere. Um, and you, Capernaum, will you be exalted on the last day? Will you be exalted in heaven? You will be brought down, oh my gosh, into Hades. Into Hades you will be brought down. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. Capernaum is where all this stuff has gone on. 
Um, Capernaum is where all this stuff has gone on. And he says, Sodom. FYI, Sodom. FYI, worst place in the history, destroyed by fire from above. If they'd have seen the stuff that you've seen, And what's the sin? What's their sin? What's the sin? What's the sin? They rejected the Savior. Again, why is he going to judge them more harshly? Well, to whom much is given, much is expected. And they were given the Son of God in their midst, healing the sick, raising the dead, touching lepers, restoring them, eating with tax collectors and sinners, and they did not repent. It was a great show, as popular as the Tiger King, but it, they didn't change. Uh, Erica's comment, outside of Jesus, Judgment Day is going to be no bueno, which I guess that means no good. Oh, we are cooking with gas. Hi, Brian. We're in the midst of the reproaches. By the way, on Good Friday, in the Good Friday rite, is the ancient 8th century, 9th century reproaches where God levels judgment on his people. Now, Dr. Nagel didn't like those. And every year I read them and I think, I see why Dr. Nagel didn't like those. But it's God executing judgment upon sinners. And it's, it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. If I'd have known that I was going to make reference to those, I would have um, had the bulletin ready. Um, because um, God basically says stuff like... Um, Cooking with gas. Yeah, it's, it's, we're really cooking. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? I mean, anyway. Um, he says stuff like, Oh, my vineyard, what could I have done more to you? Um, I gave you water. I, I, I fed you. I tended to you. Um, and you have crucified my son. The reproaches, um, you know what I love about Joe Madden? I absolutely love about Joe Madden. Joe Madden is the best husband, all right? Because Sandra, dear Sandra Madden, is telling me, is, is in my ear every other day. Do you know that your 30-minute Bible study has become 45 minutes? She said it like three times. And now Joe comes on and is like, oh, I didn't get the uh, alert, but it's a good thing that your, um, that your 30 minute Bible study goes for 45 minutes. See what he's doing there? That guy knows how to love his wife. All right. Capernaum, will you be exalted to, uh, in heaven? No, no. You'd be brought down lower than Hades, lower than hell. For the mighty works have been done in you that were done in uh, were done in Sodom, they <laughs> Ed Killian caught the reference um, earlier. I've, I've been slipping. Never mind what kind of references I've been slipping in, but but Ed Killian finally caught the um, professional reference, the wrestling reference that has been. Uh, I, I keep throwing those in from time to time, and Ed Killian's the first to call me out on it. I love it. Uh, he will tell you that it'll be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. I mean, can you imagine that Vegas would have it better on the last day than you? Can you imagine that um, 
uh, New Orleans would have it better on the last day than you. Us LSU fans, can you imagine if Tuscaloosa and Nick Saban had it better on the last day than us? Because we had the gospel preached to us and we did not repent and believe. Ah! The greatest prayer. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, very Hebrewism. It's a Hebrewism. Happens over and over again in, in the Old Testament. He answered and said. He um, answered saying. That's a Hebrewism. You can tell that the tax collector is a Hebrew by the way he writes. And you can tell that he's writing to the Abraham David crowd by how he writes. Ex homologumai. To homologine is to same say. To ex homologine is to same say out. To confess out. Um, I confess to you, Father. Which they translate as, I thank you, Father. I praise you, Father. I say back to you what you've said. I say out to you what you've said, uh, Father. Lord of heaven and earth. So he makes reference to heaven above and Hades. And now we have Hades, earth, and heaven. We have it all. We have a very Hebrew-minded way of speaking and a very Hebrew-minded way of thinking. Speaking of the crowds, where's Thor? He's underneath this blanket. Can you see him? See him? He's like this. Uh, this isn't cool. You have hidden... You have hidden, oh, the head of my altar guild's calling me. She's looking for me. Um, you have hidden these things from the sophone, the wise, and the dudes with understanding, and revealed them to the little children. Um, that's the kingdom of God. The smart people, the intelligent folks, the guys in the lab coats, they don't, get, they don't get the gospel, but you do. You get the gospel. They don't get the gospel, you get the gospel. They don't get the, the, um, the thing, you get the thing. Um, so you hidden it from them. You hid it from the wise and revealed it to the children? The Velcro, I, I was going to say, uh, the ones that are attached to us that we don't want around. Um, and what's the mystery? What's the wisdom? The wisdom is that Jesus is for sinners. Is that God is for sinners. Is that God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve or, or harbor his anger forever. He set all our sins onto his son. That is the mystery hidden from all ages. In, 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 in Ephesians, it's that God saves sinners. He saves Gentiles. Oh yes, Father, this is, um, this happened, this was your glorious will. Your, um, um, it was to your good pleasure. Um, it was to your good pleasure. Notice, it's good and gracious the way God is. God is good and gracious. 
we think of God's will as sort of neutral. You have to determine whether it's left or right. Which way am I going to go? No, in the way of faith, God is good and gracious. The good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayers, but we pray in this petition that it'll be done amongst us also. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. Don't forget, check out Higher Things as merchandise. Hi, Peter. The Lord be with you. Um, all things have been handed over to me. Um, the same word as is used for Jesus being handed over. Um, same, same word. Um, and passive. And also remember that the devil offered these things to him in chapter 3. And he says, um, um, he says, you know what, I'm not going to get things that way. I'm not going to get them by worshiping you. They'll be given to me um, from above. Jim, you need a higher things blanket. He needs a higher things blanket. I mean, he's the mascot. <laughs> look at this poor guy. I mean, look. Yeah, I, mean, I wish you could see it. Um... All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son reveals him. So how do you know the Father? How do you know God? How do you know the Father? By the way, this is the excellent point that um, Pastor Rake just brought out. Um, this word that is um, is used here for um, he's revealed this to the uh, not to the wise, not to the learned. He hasn't revealed it to the wise and the learned. No, he's revealed it to sinners, children. But this word is so very, very important. Pastor Rake is very, very profoundly important in causing us to stop here. Because take a look at this word and what it means. I think I pasted it three times. That's what you get for loving me. Everything that I had is gone, as you can see. No, that word means baby. So it's been hidden from the wise people and it's been given to the most useless people in the world. Babies. Infants. That was a triple paste. I'm sorry. For you watching the video, I'm going to move this over here so you can see it. So you can be profoundly gifted by Pastor Rake. That's babies. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son reveals himself to. And, and as we sort of draw in today, this is so important. That is the, the, that is the context of, Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you Sabbath. The context is not, I need you to make a decision for Jesus today. I need you to take that step and come forward and make a decision for Christ. No, the only people who know the Son, who know the Father, are those to whom the Son reveals. And so the idea that you could turn this verse into a recipe for you to come to Him, when He said, 
No one comes to me. You lose the point when you make it all about you. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble at heart. <coughs> I do not have... <coughs> I do not have Rona. I do not have Rona. I just have allergies. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We're going to pick this back up again tomorrow because we've run out of time. Sandra's... Um, um, Sandra's pointing out that the time is, is past, but I want you to make sure you understand this. This section is about what he does for you, not what you do for him. Don't get lost in the come to me and make that the big deal when he's the one who gives rest. I'll see you in a hop, skip and a jump tomorrow. Maybe we'll have an awake dog tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel, starting just a few verses before uh, chapter 12. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for coming.